Yesterday, Donald Trump spoke at the Detroit Economic Club and insulted the city of Detroit. This is what he actually said. I don't think anything that we're talking about today is high on our list. Every, the whole country is going to be like, you want to know the truth? It'll be like Detroit. Our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president. You're going to have a mess on your hands. She just pissed off a lot of folks in Detroit and the campaign, the vice president Kamala Harris and Governor Tim Walz, they clapped back. They said we were dead. Detroit waving the white flag, the city filing for bankruptcy. That our best days were behind us. That living here is like living in hell. But you know what we said? We said F that. We rebuilt ourselves. We looked out for each other, got our hands dirty, and put in the hard work. And this guy, he don't know anything about that. We are a city of winners, of up and comers, of builders. The Motor City. Bigger and better. Here, we believe in freedom. We don't bow down to nobody, and we never will. And so what Donald Trump doesn't understand or care to learn is that when he said our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president, that he should be so goddamn lucky. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Now that's a damn ad. That's how you clap back. In fact, run that shit back. They said we were dead. Detroit waving the white flag, the city filing for bankruptcy. That our best days were behind us. That living here is like living in hell. But you know what we said? We said F that. We rebuilt ourselves. We looked out for each other, got our hands dirty, and put in the hard work. And this guy, he don't know anything about that. We are a city of winners, of up and comers, of builders. The Motor City. Bigger and better. Here, we believe in freedom. We don't bow down to nobody, and we never will. And so what Donald Trump doesn't understand or care to learn is that when he said our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president, that he should be so goddamn lucky. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Man, that's what I'm saying. Michael M. Hotep, host, African History Network show out of Detroit. Matt Manning, civil rights activist, civil rights attorney out of Corpus Christi. And joining us in the studio, Mondale Robinson, principal of the Black Male <coughs> Voter Project and also mayor of Enfield, North Carolina. Uh, that's what I'm saying, uh, Michael. That's how you fire back when somebody comes to your city, insults your city, and you come right back saying, hashtag team, whip that ass is ready for you, Trump and Vance. Absolutely. Come out and vote to make sure that the traitor in chief never becomes president again. OK, uh, people in Detroit were furious when this happened, Roland. Uh, I posted about this on social media yesterday. I said, Detroit, come out and vote and make sure this convicted felon, con man, traitor never becomes president again. What Donald Trump is trying to do is to galvanize uh, white suburbanites around Detroit. To, to come out and vote. And he's saying that America is going to be like Detroit in the past, okay, that was d disinvested, where you had high poverty rates, things like this. Detroit is one of the greatest comeback stories in this country. Detroit is not perfect. I'll be the first one to admit it. But we are homicides are down. A lot of major crimes are down. Investment is up. The population has just increased by 1,800 for the first time in decades. Mayor Mike Duggan has responded back to this. And I'm not a fan of Mike Duggan. I ain't vote for him any of the three times that he, that he ran. But he responded on Instagram. He put out a video refuting this nonsense from Donald Trump. Donald Trump is sick. And he's scared of losing. He's scared of going to prison. This should be a clarion call to not just African Americans across the country, but anybody who's going to be negatively impacted by his policies like, like Project 2025 and Agenda 47 to, to vote to stop him and vote to put somebody in the office who's 
competent and whose policies will benefit right. you, which is Kamala Harris. Matt, if uh, those largely white business leaders who were sitting in the audience, somebody should have stood up and said, oh, hell no, you're not going to insult our city. And they should have, that should have been a mass walkout for what that man had to say about Detroit. Yeah, they absolutely should have. And I think Michael's right. I think that's what he's probably trying to do is not only galvanize people in the suburbs, but play whiteness and the fears. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Facts for this administration, mm -hmm. or rather this, this campaign, D don't matter. Fear is what matters. That's why they're out trumpeting stories that have been uh, debunked regarding people eating pets and all kinds of stuff in, o in Ohio that we know is not true. That's because they're leveraging people's fears. And I think what's especially interesting about this is that this is in Michigan, which is a battleground state. So it seems like the last place you want to go is to a state you absolutely have to win to win the presidency and insult the people in the biggest city in the state. It makes no sense. Um, but that speaks to just the idiocy of this campaign and how they're playing this. But it's about whiteness is what it is. And they're trying to leverage, uh, you know, white fears, essentially. Yeah, let's, 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 let's remind people here uh, that it was Donald Trump in 2020 uh, who attacked black voters in Detroit, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Milwaukee. In addition, according to Jack Smith's uh, recent um, uh, uh, filing, go to my uh, iPad, uh, one of the officials with Donald Trump literally said, uh, let's make them riot. A Trump campaign operator said, let's make them riot. Uh, uh, come out. Let me come back to me. I'm uh, lost the page here. Uh, let's make them riot in Detroit. Yeah. Let's make them riot after he lost uh, the election. And so, right there, that says all you need to know about how they feel about Detroit uh, and black folks. Yeah, I mean, listen, Roland. If we're being honest, it's not just Detroit. It's not just Wisconsin. It's not just the battleground states. Donald Trump don't care about black people anywhere in the world. And he told us that when he said we were descendant of people from asshole countries. Plus, Donald Trump has a long history, even before I was born in 73, when he first came onto the scene of hating black people. We couldn't rent from him. You couldn't lease an apartment from him. You couldn't work from him. He didn't want you counting his money. The track record is already written about Donald Trump. Anybody believing that Donald Trump give a damn about black people or that is he's not using a method that was created by Lee Atwater for Nixon, talking about the Southern strategy, that's all Donald Trump is doing. He's deploying the Southern strategy to remind or wake up the, the racist nature of those white people that will follow him down any path. We know it's not about patriotism. Hell, they try to take over the Capitol. We know it's not about backing police officers. They want to defund the police. We know it's not about democracy because they actually want to do away with the Constitution. And Donald Trump himself said he'll be a dictator on day one. So it's not about any of that. All it's about is whiteness and people fear. The problem with Donald Trump is numbers just ain't on his side. Since 2016, nearly 40 million new voters have come online and 20 million baby boomers have left. That means majority, more white people have left the voting roll than ever. So this old tactic of trying to scare white people is not enough. And we just need people to understand that in this moment. Uh, this is what the Detroit Free Press had. Go to my iPad. A new court filing in the Justice Department's criminal case against former President Donald Trump and what it argues were his efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election said Wednesday that a campaign worker urged a riot to break out at what was then the TFC Center in Detroit as votes believed to be unfavorable to Trump were being counted. Uh, if you keep reading this, it said the claim was made as part of a 165-page filing uh, by special counsel Jack Smith. Not only that, keep in mind, Michael, in 2020, you had a top Republican in Michigan who said, let's continue to count all the votes in Michigan except Detroit. Absolutely. And I live four or five minutes away from the TCF Center. I saw it as it unfolded, as you had the uh, pickup truck emblazoned with Trump paraphernalia uh, riding out in, in front, uh, galvanizing people. And as the crowd uh, grew, the police had to block off, block off the street in downtown Detroit. I saw it as it happened. So this is, and, and Mondale hit on what I've talked about here on this show before. Donald Trump strategically targets and raises animosity against Detroit, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Atlanta, Georgia, okay? And those, in 2020, those cities went for Biden-Harris, and he's trying to 
uh, prey on white fears, and this goes back to 2016 uh, in an analysis from the Atlantic.com, which talked about how it was not economic issues that drove a lot of uh, uh, uneducated, uh, college non-educated white males to Trump. It was the, uh, it was uh, cultural, it was cultural issues and the browning of America, the fear of the browning of America. So when we when we communicate with African Americans, especially and especially young brothers. These are things we have to talk about and talk about policy and how policy impacts every aspect of your lives. And see, Matt, if you ex expand this, we also have to be explaining to people that this is an individual who will deny resources to such cities. When Puerto Rico, when, 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 the, uh, when the hurricane hit there, he denied resources for two years. Um, his own folk have been on record as saying he was denying resources to an area of California until they had to show him voter data. There was his voters who, uh, who, who would be impacted. This man, and this is what Project 2025 is all about, this man is going to starve black cities. Donald Trump yes. won't give a damn about Houston, New Orleans. He won't care about Charlotte. He won't care about Atlanta, Detroit. He will, he will trash any city where you got significant black voters, where you have Democratic mayors, because that's who this man is. And so black folks need to understand, you can be talking about all oh, your pocketbook, but when you start looking at the resources that are becoming to where black folks are, he is going to starve them because he is appealing to his white MAGA base. Yes, full stop. I'm so glad you said that because that's a really astute observation. But that's not only Donald Trump. Let's be honest. That's what Republicans do around the country. They starve the black part of town. They don't give it resources. And then when that part of town has issues or becomes economically advantageous, they now do what? Go in and steal the land, gentrify and call all the people there mongrels. I mean, that's a strategy we've seen across the United States. And the problem with this, especially to your point, not only is Trump going to deny those resources, and not only is he not going to be truthful about the denial of those resources, that denial of resources is going to be exacerbated in states like Texas, where Greg Abbott, who wants to be booty buddy with Trump, is going to say, I'm not accepting Medicaid dollars. I'm not accepting federal monies for all the people who need it in the state. All that does is make those kinds of denials that much worse in states like this, where your governor is going to do everything that he can to politically be top of mind to try to succeed Mr. Trump and to try to be a part of his closer um, entourage. We've seen that. Greg Abbott has done that. We know that. So not only is Trump going to deny it, but it's going to be exacerbated in places where uh, DeSantis, Abbott and others want to be a part of his same milk. Um, Mondale, this is what uh, a, uh, a tweet from uh, one of your fellow mayors, the mayor of Detroit, Mike Dugan, he put out, Detroit just hosted the largest NFL draft in history. The Tigers are b back in the playoffs. The Lions are headed to the Super Bowl. Crime is down and our population is growing. Lots of cities should be like Detroit. And we did it all without Trump's help. Yeah, listen, I mean, Roland, if we're, if we're being honest, this doesn't matter to anybody on that side. Trump followers aren't following him for truth. I mean, this guy told more than 30,000 lies. That's 20 some lies per day when he was in the White House. That is not the nature of, of what's going on here. These people are not following Trump because he, he is Jesus. They're following him because he's the new Jesus. He's a white Jesus that will push white supremacy above all issues and at any cost regardless of what Americans were talking about, but for white people. And you have to be a white person that loves white people. And I, and I, don't, I don't care if people are upset about that thought, but that's what we're seeing here. When you see someone willing to go to this length, I will say this though, we don't need to talk at or explain to black people what's happening uh, with Trump. We see it. Black people know it. I think the world is missing what black people are saying, especially the young brothers. Young brothers aren't saying that they don't they discount progressive ideas. They're just saying that the tactics that we use are not beneficial to their life or how they are reached. We see this because every election cycle since Donald Trump's come on the scene, black men have shown to be more progressive. 2020, Trump got less of the black male vote than he did in 2016. 
2022, we saw more black men voting progressive. In 2023, we saw something that we never thought we would see. In Ohio, black men outperformed everybody on women's right to choose. The closest demographic to us were black women, and they were eight percentage points behind us. We even voted more for women's right to choose than we did for the legalization of marijuana. So what I think I'm hearing is people are afraid because of Donald Trump tactic. That means they're working even on some of us, because I know to believe that black men don't understand what's happening right now with Donald Trump is to say that we're living in silos and black men just ain't. We're at the bottom of all social markers, man. Uh, well, bottom line is this here. Um, what what I need black folks to understand uh, is when Donald Trump is sitting here t uh, lying uh, and when he rolls out uh, certain black people and he says that, oh, uh, this rapper or this rapper, uh, you know, when you got a, a Kodak black who's of Haitian descent saying I'm still going to vote for Trump after what that man said about Haitians, that tells you right there the kind of person that you're dealing with. Uh, and so what our folks also have to understand, this ain't a moment where you sit on the fence. This is not a moment where it's like, well, you know what? And I hear this all the time. Well, both parties, they really are the same. Actually, they're not. Uh, and in a moment, we're going to play my interview with Wendell Pierce. I need people to understand, even when we're having this conversation about both parties, the issue is not party. The issue is your interest. Mm. And see, and that's where people keep getting caught up. When I hear a lot of these brothers and sisters, man, the Democratic Party ain't this, they ain't that, ain't nothing happened in 60 years. But first of all, we know that's a lie. But you do have to step back and begin to say, wait a minute, what are the issues that I actually care about? And then when I start looking at the data, uh, how does that actually line up? That, to me, is how uh, we must be thinking about this. And I think uh, too many people, when they are talking about uh, these issues, talking about what's going on uh, you know, out here, they're caught up in a lot of this chatter you're hearing from a bunch of mealy mouth individuals uh, who don't know nothing about public policy. Uh, and y'all know they are. All those so-called uh, YouTube, uh, TikTok, Instagram political scientists who are telling you that your vote, you get nothing for your vote. None of that stuff matters. Well, guess what? All of them are lying. And see, I'm not even going to give them any shine by mentioning their names, but a bunch of them look like us and a whole bunch of folk follow them. And I see y'all tweets, oh, you need to debate so-and-so, Dr. So-and-so and debate so-and-so. I don't debate and waste brain cells with fools. <laughs> and so we need to understand what's going on here. There are chaos agents who look like us. And there are individuals who y'all, some of y'all watch, listen to, who don't give a damn about black people. I love this billboard that's up in Miami right now. I saw it on social media. It says, Haitians who respect themselves don't vote for Trump. Mm. Respect Haiti. Go to bit.ly forward slash Haitian votes to make your plan to vote. I love that because that's saying you don't vote for somebody who disrespects your people. And black folks, that includes us. He refused to rent property to black families. They were turning away renters based on race and color. This is the same individual who took out a full page ad in the New York Times calling for the execution of five young black and Latino boys who were innocent of Central Park Five. He wanted us dead. The American people want better than that. We deserve better. Vote Kamala Harris for president. Paid for by Black Lives Matter Action Pack, not authorized by any candidate.